Time to revive a long-missing segment of the show and bring you a five-minute-ish review. The algorithms on the streaming platforms often uncover some obscure film that they think I might like. And occasionally, they are right. This is how I happened upon the 2016 film Infinity Chamber. This very low-budget film, reportedly $125,000, was written and directed by Travis Malloy and stars an actor I was somewhat familiar with, Christopher Soren Kelly. Kelly was the titular character in one of my favorite films, 2009's Inc. In the near future, Frank awakens in a small automated cell with only an AI called Howard to keep him company. A device in the wall infiltrates Frank's dreams and makes him replay the day he was captured. Learning that he can control the dream, he uses the repeating day to figure out the hows and whys of his incarceration and to get to know Gabby, a coffee shop owner. When Howard starts to break down and Frank's supplies begin to dwindle, he has to find a way out. But can anything, or even reality, be trusted? The almost exclusive use of just two sets is a challenging prospect for even the most seasoned director, but Malloy pulls it off here. The single futuristic prison cell brings to mind the cult favorite sci-fi horror movie Cube, and I have to think that Vincenzo Natale's film had some influence here. The revelation that the coffee house is an influenced dream is a slow one. The movie begins letting you think that it's merely a flashback. The audience discovers the truth when Frank discovers he has some control of the dream and he can alter the outcome, even avoiding the sequence of events that led to his capture. Christopher Soren Kelly is great at being the only person on the screen. Maybe I'm a little biased because of his involvement with Ink, but I like seeing him. I like hearing him. Frank has to carry all the emotion in the scenes with his AI captor Howard for the obvious reasons that Howard doesn't have any. Frank's frustration and anger mixed with confusion at his incarceration is palpable. This is the first relationship we experience in the film. Despite Frank's opinion that some things just shouldn't be computerized, giving him a bit of a disdain for an over-computerized world, his interactions with Howard over time become almost friendly. A human's need for friendship is powerful, and if all you have is a talking security camera to make friends with, then a talking security camera becomes your friend. Even more importantly, Howard becomes the one thing that might be able to help Frank. The time he spends with Howard and how it affects him becomes apparent when he begins to interact with the people in his induced dream, particularly Gabby. He doesn't really know how to talk with another human, even a computer-induced dream human. His lack of practice speaking with another human, combined with the understandable confusion over the situation, is eventually overcome in the interaction with Gabby whether she's real or not, becomes a thing that allows Frank to remain sane. Gabby, played by Cassandra Clark, is the literal dream girl here. Even though it is Frank's subconscious that controls how Gabby reacts, the budding friendship and the trust she puts into Frank still feels natural and pleasant. You find yourself rooting for the two of them, and maybe even finding yourself a little envious of Frank finding someone so perfect. I was enthralled by this film. To have a movie star only two people, three if you count Howard, and not have your attention wander is a mark of a fascinating story. I not only wanted to know what was going to happen, I needed to know. And speaking of what happens, there are multiple ways people have interpreted the ending of the film. The brilliant thing is, I think they're all valid. If you'd ask me which interpretation I'd choose, I can't give you the definitive answer. I have my favorite, and I'd love to hear yours. So go and watch Infinity Chamber, the time of recording is available here in the United States on Amazon, and it's included if you're an Amazon Prime subscriber. It is also available on Apple TV, and if you don't mind some ads, Tubi. Once you watch, please let me know what you thought of the film. Leave me a note on any of our social media platforms, follow the link in the show notes, or send an email to timeshifterspodcast at gmail.com.